Okay, hello. So welcome to our video lesson on test construction. So we're going to talk about common mistakes in test construction. This would just be brief. Uh, this will not be a webinar length type. So uh, this would just be reminders for us, especially for our assessment. And before that, I know that for many of us who are preparing for uh, major exams, Please, let's make sure that we check our curriculum guides, our syllabus, our, um, our table of specifications. And once we're done with the test paper, it is best that you review the test paper next to the TOS or table of specifications and the curriculum guide. We have to be assured that everything is aligned and you have to reflect as well if you have covered those topics as well because we do not want our students to end up wondering why these items are included where in fact you were not able to to teach those so let's start so things to avoid in writing test questions first writing confusing questions so in as much as we want to check their critical thinking skills critical thinking is different from writing a highly confusing question it is these are the questions that are that are requiring a particular answer that could not be found in the choices or it uh, it is asking for two answers or it could be highly ambiguous okay this would prevent our students from answering well or performing well in the assessment then of course we have to make it sim the simplest and the clearest as much as possible without compromising the attack on the huts okay if it's already on the hot spot or higher order thinking skills next is including trick true false questions okay yung mga trick true or false questions like if it's true write false if it's false write true this makes the assessment invalid na okay because uh what if the student got really confused with your instruction okay this would defeat the purpose of assessing how much the student has learned just because you use trick questions okay next is making multiple choices multiple choice options different lengths why a student would have the tendency to choose the option that is different from the rest we know that right and especially for multiple choices it will be best if they are no it is really a must that they are alphabetized uh, but if they have a if they have very, uh, varied length, but I hope not very different from each other, they would be arranged based on the length. But for some, they prefer the, the alphabetical, especially for single word or phrases. So make sure that for your multiple choices options, they do not have different lengths. Because definitely, I'm telling you, we know this, that students would more likely choose the longer one. A longer option because they would have the impression ah ito yung mahaba so ito na lang ang pipiliin ko okay so next is things uh, another set of things to avoid in writing test questions is don't ask unimportant questions uh, we could be a little guilty for this especially for formative assessment uh, i could recall a teacher and even myself in my earlier years asking for for my middle name, if they know it, for bon bonus questions. It could at least be for the bonus part, but they should not be part of the items because, again, they are not related to your topic, to your subject. Um, not unless you're a very significant person and you're already part of history. Wow, parte ka na ng history, bakit hindi? Pwede kang isali. But then again, if not, just for, if it's for fun purposes, do not include yourself. Do not include unimportant questions. Um, it would be uh, it would be best if you're gonna just put it for additional points or might as well remove it na lang because at the end of the day you have your toss you have to indicate on what particular objective that falls under okay and then of course this is a major thing to avoid forgetting to proofread your test papers please do not forget to proofread okay it would be the students who would suffer uh, there were cases i admit in my initial years of teaching i i for i did not proofread it although i edited it the moment that it was printed it turned out that the numberings moved okay so the tendency is the students got confused especially if they are gonna use an answer 
change. So that's another thing. It's very important to proofread your test papers and check the grammar, okay? It's a very big no-no for us teachers so to have the grammar error on our test, test questions because that already mirrors our capacity or at some point it, it shows that um, we haven't checked our test papers. You know, students, right? Although nobody's perfect, we know that. But it, at least check it or if you're not confident, ask someone else to check it for you. Okay? Putting too much enumeration or essay kasi may iba na um, multiple choices, 10 items, then enumeration, 30 or 40. So most it's enumeration or essay already. So if, we're, if you're going to ask me based on books, the best uh, type of test would be the multiple choices. Although it's prone to guessing, but with proper writing, it wouldn't be uh, prone to guessing. But for enumeration and essay, usually it's more on the recall. For essay, it could attack the critical thinking skills, but of course, um, we could have a variety, okay? Pero syempre, depende sa subject, okay? But not too much on enumeration. So, next is tips in making effective test papers. First, I told you this already, be guided with your table of specifications. Consider the format that your school is doing. Then, we've mentioned earlier, proofread your test papers before submission or ask someone to check your test paper. Because sometimes, um, even if you're good in grammar, because you you made that you made that test paper, you tend to oversee the mistakes because of overfamiliarity. Another I could give you the the errors that you failed to see. And take time to balance the test types in your test. It would be better if you have 10 to 20 items per test type. As I've mentioned earlier, baka sampu lang yung multiple choices mo, tas tinambakan mo ng 50 for the enumeration. So that's it's big no-no. Next is consider Bloom's taxonomy of objectives in creating questions. That's why we're doing the table of specifications and we're considering the learning competencies. Then, give questions that were covered, please, in your discussion. Again, we experienced this already. Uh, although nangyayari siya, minsan na hindi mo pala na-discuss sa kabilang section. That's why we need our DLLs or daily lesson logs or lesson plans for us to be guided. So, but definitely, try your best to recall kung na-cover ba yung question na to. If you're not sure, might as well change it to something that you're sure with. And then, consider the time for completing the test. This would be uh, included in the computation in the table of specification. So there, that's just very quick. Remember that good teachers know how to bring out the best in students. That's by Charles Kraut. Okay? So, our role as teachers is to bring out the best in our students and not to put them down. So one way for us to show them that they're learning is through their assessment and it is a must that we construct them properly. So with that, this is Teachers Indy and I hope you've learned from this short video lesson. Okay, good day.